such a beautiful spring afternoon, it's not hard to believe that Easter's just around the corner, even, even though it is so very early this year. When I think of Easter, I usually think of lamb, lamb or ham, and, uh, but this year I thought I would make my most favorite lamb stew. It's a dish that I used to do with all my French cooking classes. And I haven't made one in years, and it's one of my most favorite dishes. So, if you'll come into the kitchen with me, I'm going to prepare for you a lovely French classic called Navarin Printanier. So, uh, a Navarin is a lamb stew that, by the way, has to have some turnips in it. The French <laughs> believe that turnips are at their very best in the spring, like and uh, this stew is lovely. So. If you don't put the turnips in, it's not a Navarin. It's something else. It's some sort of a lamb stew, which could be good, you know? Uh, you could put mushrooms in or green beans or just all kinds of things, anything you'd uh, like to put in a nice stew. But for a Navarin, turnips for sure, and uh, the, it, it's really fun to make. And I have a, a nice little shortcut for you too. So please, come into the kitchen and I'll show you how it's done. Thanks for joining me. You need to start with some nice bony cuts of lamb. So uh, the meaty one is going to be uh, shoulder. So you can buy shoulder chops and have the butcher saw them up for you or you can cut them up yourself into like two inch chunks, something like that. So this is two and a half pounds of shoulder and then um, for additional uh, natural gelatin and wonderful flavor, we'll add some very bony cuts, some neck bones. And uh, so have those cut into, uh, also into like two inch chunks. Now, if you can get it, put some breast in there too, which is just wonderful. Now, instead of browning these things um, all in a um, big uh, pan, uh, and waiting for all that to happen. Instead, um, I like to just toss it with a little oil and salt and pepper and stick it in a 450 oven. And that way, while you're getting your veggies ready, the lamb is uh, browning without any effort. So that'll save you some time and energy. Now, I, um, for the veggies, um, I actually hate peeling little pearl onions. I was gonna buy some frozen ones, but I couldn't find them. So anyway, I got the fresh ones so that you can see how it's done but um, you know again don't feel that you need to peel them yourself because it's uh, not not fun so uh, cover them with boiling water let them sit for a couple of minutes to loosen the skin and that makes the peeling much easier so next um, our other convenience item is um, baby carrots. They're called baby carrots in the market. Of course they're not. They're uh, full-sized carrots that have been cut down into baby-sized pieces, which is what we would be doing ourselves anyway. So, you know, let, let the um, manufacturers do that for you. So, that's great. Now, for the turnips, you can start with like maybe two pounds of turnips and then cut those into chunks that are, you know, like maybe as much as two inches long and an inch wide, something like that. Uh, they have to be peeled and, uh, you know, traditionally they're turned into beautiful olive shapes, but uh, let's, let's not go there. Let's just do some nice chunks and try to get them fairly even so that they'll cook evenly. Uh, so again, start with, you know, maybe two pounds of turnips something like that and uh, when you have the turnips cut up then um, it'll probably be time to go ahead and um, peel those uh, baby onions uh, you have to nip off both ends and then uh, do whatever it takes to get that skin off you may uh, it may pop right out and then and then again you may have to dig in there to get it started whatever whatever works. You also want to take your knife and um, pierce a uh, cross in the bottom so that they uh, will hold their shape and not uh, explode while they're cooking. So uh, again, 
buy the frozen ones and skip this uh, whole step, which is what I had every <laughs> intention of doing for for my Navarone. But uh, I just couldn't uh, seem to find them where I was shopping, and I didn't want to take the time to go to another supermarket. So that's uh, that's my story. So uh, then, when you have your uh, onions ready, you can go ahead and do the uh, potatoes. I would use um, red potatoes for the, for this uh, Navarone. I think they will hold their shape better. And uh, you can uh, you can buy whatever size um, potatoes you like. I bought a fairly large red potato, so I'm cutting those into chunks. So I'm taking off um, oh a little more than half of the skin. You can leave some skin on there. So I peeled those all around, and then I'm going to cut them cut them down into uh, quarters or even smaller if they're um, uh, if they're larger potatoes even even into more pieces than that so into quarters or sixths something like that with the potatoes after you've peeled them about 50 percent and that's our veggies so um, these are the ones that need to be cooked uh, ahead of time before they go into the stew um, so set up a great big skillet with a couple of tablespoons of butter and then start um, to heat that and uh, add in your veggies. So you want these to, veggies to caramelize really nicely. That'll add a lot of flavor to your stew. And uh, it, it is traditional to give them uh, the caramelization process a little bit of a kick start by um, putting in uh, a tablespoon or two of sugar. And as usual, I use turbinado sugar because it's got more flavor than white sugar. And um, that, will, that will give your veggies a head start on getting really nicely browned. And uh, you can add a little salt and pepper in here too. It's uh, probably not necessary now. But uh, work with those uh, veggies and get, uh, get them nicely uh, caramelized. So that's really important. Um, remember that the lamb is already cooking, already browning separately, and uh, it will be um, like more than 50% cooked by the time we put them together. So go ahead and get those veggies beautifully caramelized so spend a little time with that give them a good shake don't uh, rush it you don't want to burn them okay that's what they should look like nicely caramelized as evenly as possible and um, you also want to make a, a herb bouquet you need oh, about a half teaspoon of dried uh, leaf thyme a couple of bay leaves a big old uh, sprig of parsley and tie that up into cheese cheesecloth uh, into a sachet so that you can uh, remove it easily later or you also need to do some uh, garlic with this um, this is a good time to add it when your uh, veggies are nicely caramelized so uh, uh, one or two uh, nice cloves of garlic and you know I like to slice them very thinly lengthwise so add that in let that cook just until it's flavorful and your uh, veggies will be all done and it'll be time to start uh, assembling our Navarone so let that get nice and fragrant and then don't forget to tie up your herb bouquet and you'll be all set to go. Now the lamb uh, normally needs about uh, an hour at um, in a 450 oven to get really beautifully browned. 
Now, I got a little carried away because I was, you know, working on uh, veggies and camera angles and changing batteries and <laughs> camera and all of that. So my lamp stayed in the oven for about an hour and a half. So as you can see, it's um, kind of dried out. But don't worry, it will um, soften back up and re uh, re-moisten in uh, our stew. So if you cook it too long, don't worry, it'll still be fine. So uh, it's now time to put the lamb, the browned lamb, into your uh, wonderful pan, like one of these great uh, enameled cast iron pans is ideal. Uh, I'm going to finish this on top of the stove, but you can certainly do it in the oven if you like, so something oven-proof is a good choice. So, uh, you can now add in the veggies with their garlic. Uh, the only other flavorings are a 128 ounce can of tomatoes crushed, or uh, in this case it's uh, petite dice. That'll work fine. Uh, you want to add like maybe uh, two tablespoons of tomato paste, something like that. Uh, don't forget your uh, herb bouquet. And um, you want to add about a cup of dry white wine or dry white vermouth would be nice too, something like about a cup. And then uh, now um, you're going to be adding more liquid as needed until um, the uh, uh, meat and the vegetables are covered with liquid so you can use just water because you've got plenty of uh, good flavors going on in there or if you have a natural um, stock around use that if you have a natural brown stock in the freezer that would be great so you know rinse out your tomato can and then also we want to um, deglaze our um, roasting pan too and use the juices from that. The first step is to degrease the pan, just pour out all that fat. That's a combination of lamb fat and the oil that you lubricated um, the lamb with to begin with. And then uh, to deglaze, you want to pour a little boiling water into the pan and then start to melt and scrape up all those brown bits. Uh, now this worked just fine for me with the boiling water that I'm adding to the pan but uh, you know if it doesn't melt um, sufficiently then you know put it on a burner and uh, that will that will help the process if you need to so melt all those good uh, browned uh, juices and then add that and um, you'll have almost everything into your stew. So it's time to cover this and let it um, simmer now. And the total cooking time on this is going to be like maybe as much as an hour. Uh, certainly no more than that. Uh, and um, uh, you want to check your uh, salt and pepper every now and then. Make sure you're in the right range for that. So cover it, let it cook, and uh, the one last addition is our peas. They go in at the end. So for the last 10 minutes of cooking, we're going to add our peas. So um, use about uh, 8 ounces of frozen peas, or um, one thing that um, you can uh, also do that I think is a great idea is you can use whole um, fresh uh, sugar snap peas too. That would be a really good choice very flavorful so there is our navarone isn't that gorgeous it just has to cook for a few more minutes and we want to correct the seasonings the recipe is at brucebeckinthekitchen.com i hope you'll drop in and uh, take a look and i hope you'll try my navarone printanier and please give me a comment let me know what you think of it it's always great to hear from you Thanks for joining me today. 